Hello, in this video we are going to look at a motion generation synthesis of a 4 bar linkage. Here we'll have a 70 millimeter coupler that must move through these three positions, which looks a little scary, but it's actually quite easy. We'll specify all the link lengths and then determine the Grashof condition. Here we can see the three coupler positions, and the coupler line will move through this point, this point, and then this point. To do this, all we need to do is make perpendicular bisectors from all of the points and then the intersection of the perpendicular bisectors will actually be one of our pivots. So let's do that. We'll go into construction, draw a line, we'll draw a line from here to here and from this point to that point and the points that are connected represent the same point of the coupler in its different positions. Now we'll make a line, we'll start at the midpoint and then we'll make another line starting at the midpoint. And then I'll make these two perpendicular to one another. These two perpendicular to one another. And I will extend them. And this point right here, this intersection point, will be one of the pivots. And do the same for the other point in the coupler. Perpendicular bisector. There's the other perpendicular bisector. What we can do is we can trim them. It's not necessary, but it might be a little bit easier to snap to. Trim that using the Smart Trim tool or the Power Trim. My next step is to make a link. It won't be the new link. This will be just a stationary link from the pivot to the coupler. I want to make sure that we're going to the same point that we see this bisector going to. We don't want to go from here to here. We want to go from this pivot to the coupler. And what that will do, that will give us a length of our links. But I won't measure those yet. Let's go to new links. Make a line. Just make this kind of out of whack. But I'm starting and ending at the pivots. And then I'm going to use my equal relation. So this rocker or crank, we don't know yet make that to be equal. We'll make this and the coupler to be equal. And that coupler is 70 millimeters. I didn't show it yet. We'll see it in the end. And then this link will equal, I guess it's this one down here. Those equal. There we go. I'm going to hide our construction lines. Let's do it this way. Now let's verify the motion. We're going to see that we probably can't go all the way around. You see we get bound up right around there. But that is the motion of our linkage. Let's go ahead and measure the actual link lengths. We'll go into DIMMS, Smart Dimension. DIMMS is hidden, that's why you can't see it. Now let's do that again. Accept that. There's our 70. We'll verify that, that that's the actual, see how it's not. So let's do this. Let's, let's delete that. And let's go here. And we'll make the measurement here. Now we don't see any rounding on that. The issue was the coupler looked horizontal, but was actually slightly slanted. The original dimension of 69.99 was a horizontal component and would have prevented the linkage from moving. And then our final link length is our ground link from this point to that point. And so there are four links. Our longest is 84.7, shortest is 38.2. Let's check out our Grashof condition. For better or worse, I popped in the equations here or the numbers here. Our longest link, our shortest link, and then the two other links we see that our longest and shortest is greater than our two other links. That means that we have a non-Grashof linkage. So there's no complete revolution on any of our links. Thank you.